Um, thanks for having me, everyone. As Annette said, I'm from Sydney Uni, um, and I did PhD work on cover crops, and we used moisture probes. Um, and today I'm going to talk about those moisture probes <laughs> and look at ways that maybe we could be getting some more information out of them. Now, look, if you've got them, there might be a bit of a recap for some of you, but basically these things work not too dissimilarly to the little pronged probes you'd buy at Bunnings and put in your pot plants at home. They'll tell you when it's wet and they'll tell you when it's dry. These have uh, sensors every 10 centimetres. This is 80 centimetres long, so we've got eight sensors in it. This is the output of the top sensor over a series of crop periods. Yes, they are wheat. The wheat results looked a bit better for us, so I'm going to talk about them today. But we will be applying the same things to cotton in the future. So we had two crop Oh, two wheat crops that we looked at. It's pretty much telling us when it's wet and when it's dry. We went out and we did some comparisons with these things and we felt that in, when it was sort of in this mid-range here, around 30%, the output of the probe was, you know, not that far off the actual weight volume of moisture that we had in the soil, or volumetric moisture. When it got a little bit drier or a little bit wetter, um, the extremes really drew out and it didn't really make as much sense. If you have these at your place, you're probably familiar with the dashboards that come with them. They report on 15 minute increments and they will put every probe, oh, every sensor up on your dashboard, which for one probe, it's not that confusing. You can still sort of tell what's going on, but if you had a bunch of different probes, it would be a big blur up there. For us, we were looking at cover crops and um, we wanted to summarise that in a way that was meaningful for, for us. For growers like yourselves, it might be a bit different points in the season, you might be interested in different depths, but we looked at the whole profile. So over 80 centimetres, this was the average moisture that we had throughout the season. A bit easier to compare between probes probably. We found that the moisture didn't really make a whole lot of sense to us, the output that we were getting, which if you're irrigating, it's fine, you turn on the tap, you wet it if it's dry, but if you're dry land, you probably need a little bit more information to be making some more informed decisions. So we went about calibrating them in a simple way that could hopefully be accessible to most of you. Um, little recap of soil volumes. If you took soil call, you're gonna have volume of soil, you're gonna have a solid phase, a void phase, water and air. We're looking at monitoring this water phase. So we took those cores, we cut them into 10 centimetre sec sections, we weighed them, we dried them, we weighed them again, differences of water. We then compared that with time stamped data from the probes and looking at them collectively. We had six probes in the trial, we had two dates. Um, they didn't co correlate all that well, but if we looked at individual probes, uh, and we got predictions, they did correlate quite well, as you can see. So on the bottom, we got the estimated volumetric water from the probe, what we measured with the cores, and I mean, it's not too bad. We were pretty happy with that. So with this, with this extra calibration, based on the factory calibration that they come with, you have you know, a pretty fair idea of how much water you've got in your whole profile every 15 minutes that these are communicating with you. So applying that calibration to our previous plot, where we had our percentage over here, because we've got volumetric water, we can equate that with a depth, an effective depth of water that we have in that profile distributed to the depth. So we're bouncing around here between about 275 and 125. Knowing what the moisture is in the profile, Maybe you could talk about field capacity points. You could talk about wilting points. Maybe not from a year and a half of data, but if you had a couple years, you could be pretty confident that you've got some really low points. And here, it looks like we're playing with maybe, what is it, 150 mils of water in our profile. Again, as I've already alluded to with my little scroll wheel mishap, it makes it pretty easy to compare different treatments. So this green line is still the cover crop treatments, and then we got as a comparison just a standard fallow. And we can see that 
in the cover crop period there was less drawdown on the water. Um, we can also see our recharge period which was pretty awesome, nothing to do with me, it's very easy to do in a wet year. Um, but you can also see that we seem to have more water being drained out from the cover crop plots. We can speculate as to what that is, but at this stage probably a bit of speculation. Um, and further clarification is each, line, each one of these lines only correlates with one probe, right? That's one probe for each treatment. So to get a bit more confidence, we looked at how we could uh, compare a bunch of probes in these treatments. Be a bit messy on this plot, probably, but um, we decided to summarise them and make a little bar plot. <laughs> so we looked at every 15 minutes increment that we had, and we compared that with the previous increment. If it was more, there was an infiltration from rainfall ideally, but probably a little bit of capillary action as well. Um, and every deficit was a consumption, and that would be plant uptake, uh, deep drainage, evaporation, right? So everything below the line is a consumption event, everything above is an infiltration, and I've laid over the top of that the rainfall in those blue lines. So luckily for me, a lot of those blue lines line up with the red lines that go up above, which is pretty cool, but it's not perfect, because things are pretty, um, well, rainfall's pretty variable, and these rain gauges are a couple around the farm. But anyway, as I said before, the cover crops looked like more water was moving around. So we can put that behind it in green, and we can see that a lot more water is moving. With the cover crops, yep, we've got bigger drawdown. We've got some interesting things going here, oh, going on here, um, but. But then I guess we get to the interesting slide, and this is like, this is the last one you've got to pay attention for, but this is where we get to say, did we leave ourselves with a huge deficit from putting the cover crop in? How much did it cost us to put the cover crop in? And were there other benefits for water infiltration associated with the cover crop, right? That's the question we're asking here. You could do this with any crop. You could do it with any management period. I think you could be doing things like this in a precision ag context to really have a good idea with what's going on in your different management zones. You could team it up with some other tech to get a bit more confidence. But anyway, for now, what I've done here is I have bolded every, every winner in the infiltration consumption balance efficiency um, category. That's just more water was moving through. Yes, we had more infiltration in, oh, the cover crops won that. There was more water consumed. Um, and aside from where we were growing the cover crop, we had a better balance in the cover crop. There was a better outcome. This might be incorrect. I'll change that for this afternoon. <laughs> but basically, the difference that we had in the cover growing period is, or well, the difference is only, it only sorry, we're 20 mils down where we could have been 20 mils up. So it cost us 40 mils to put the cover crop in and it's potentially resulted in overall, over the whole period, you know, 10% more water getting into the system. Anyway, this is a first application of something like this and it's just a proof of concept that maybe we could do it. I'm not saying this is the results to take home, do you want to... Can I just ask a question? That first crop there in week 2020, are those numbers, the data from the week 20 included in that total at the bottom? Well, I hope so. Does the cover crop have the you grew after the week influence how that week grew before? Well, we had a cover crop before that as well. Yeah, sorry. In the same treatment? Yeah, it's all the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I was, I was a bit quick. I was a bit rushed at the start. <laughs> yeah, we had two cover, cro two cover crops, two wheat crops, but we didn't have the probes in for the first cover crop. Um, but excellent question. <laughs> um, and I guess the other interesting thing to look at here is after we terminated the cover crop, the infiltration that we 
well, the water that we captured, I would say is considerably higher for your fallow period. And as we saw from the plot before, they sort of balanced out. But again, wet year, easy to do. It'd be more interesting to see what happens in some drier years, and we're coming up to those um, with our future work, hopefully. So we liked this, it was cool, it worked. We would like to maybe increase the frequency of our measurements beyond like 15 minutes to see if we get more information that's inf interesting, better estimates or something like that. Um, but we also really want to look at some different soils, obviously cotton, um, and other things that we'd like to do is maybe reduce the downtime period, maybe with some data loggers in the nodes and stuff like that. Anyway, we're going to be doing this project <laughs> over the next three years. If anyone is interested in being involved, I would love to come and take lots of measurements on your farms. Hopefully, to help you answer your questions as well. Because, well, do you yeah. come, do you install the probes and is that part of the funding of the project? Oh, red hot question. <laughs> yeah, look, we have, um, we have budget for some probes to be put in, but if people wanted to put another couple of probes in next to them, the, all the information is going to be a lot better. But yeah, we have enough probes to be put in on the properties if you're interested. And, yeah. and the project's for three years. So if, if you had a grower in the room or an agro that thought there was a paddock in the rotation that for the next three years we could measure this? 100%. Yeah. We would like to, um, we'd like to be putting stuff in for as long as possible. Yeah. Probably two years. I don't care if there's other stuff in that rotation. Yeah. But um, we would, <laughs> the other catch is we would like cover crops to be in there too. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone's interested in cover crops, hopefully there was a little bit of selling going on here, but anyway, yeah, please talk to me after. How long did you leave the cover crop in? That one was in for about six weeks. Yeah. And how much stuff, did you sort of measure how much stuff there was on the ground? There was, there was an awful lot. There was like 10 tonnes. <laughs> there might have been some volunteers in there. Work they did in Queensland, yeah, they found out the critical factor was how much stubble you had already, and if you've got a lot, mm. and the potential benefit is obviously much lower. Mm. In terms of the. Well, if you've got plenty of ground cover anyway, a couple of crops not going to give you a great benefit, it was sort of the end. Totally. Which is pretty sensible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the other thing they found was the length of the fallow was important too. So obviously a shorter fellow, you've got less. Mm. And that's something we're pretty interested in looking at with this work and the idea of knowing how much water you have at different points in time with an outlook or a conservative outlook, an optimistic outlook, you can maybe make a decision as to whether you leave that crop in for longer or whether you terminate it sooner, cover crop wise. Um, and if you are, if you know, whoa, got right out of it. Oh, that's convenient. If you know how much water you're potentially going to be consuming by growing that crop, then you've got, you got more information to work with. And that's what this is all about. It's about managing that water.